This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Everybody, welcome to Portugal and the seaside resort of Portimao. This city goes back a very long way indeed. Back in 550 BC, it was known as Portus Hannibalis. Sadly, not much of that old history is still around. The great earthquake of 1755 and the tsunami that followed it destroyed most of the buildings around here and in fact, pretty much everywhere on the Algarve coast, even reaching as far as the capital, Lisbon. Through the years, the town has based its economy mainly on shipping and fishing, as well as now being a tourism hotspot for British, Portuguese and Irish visitors. But we're not here for tourism, we're here for a battle in the Hancock 24 hours of Portimao. We are in Portugal at the beautiful circuit of Portimao with a beautiful weather, actually only sunshine we have. But I think that's also at the same time the tricky thing of this race because it's very hot, it's very warm and it will be very difficult for the drivers to manage these circumstances. So I think it will be a tough race for the, for the drivers. The Creventic organised FIA sanctioned endurance series are well known for the quality of track time as well as the quantity of track time during the races. As well as that, the series also tries to make available ample time for testing. The drivers had a lot of uh, testing time, but I think that's more to test the circuit because this circuit is really, really difficult and challenging circuit. And they really had needed time to get used to the circuit. But the weather conditions, yeah, th that is still something different. And through some of those tests, some of the teams get into technical or tactical difficulties. Uh, the shock absorber came loose from the front hub and detached. Uh, fortunately, it was a low speed corner and there wasn't really any damage other than replacing the hub. The, what we call the knuckle, the carrier, the wheel carrier. It just came out. We had an issue with the 308 in the free practice, the private session. Uh, it was a not important thing. First of all, we ran out of gas. But OK, this was a plane we are trying to adapt the fuel consumption. So while playing, we ran out of gas. And then we had a small issue with a, a gearbox captor. But nothing really dangerous and bad. The old Tram Peugeots have raced in the series earlier this season. But the 308 is a new car. The car is brand new. Uh, the car went to do a very famous 24-hour race in Germany. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the driver crossed a rail and destroyed the car completely. So the 308 is brand new. So we rebuilt it from A to Z and we had to readjust all setup settings to this track. The Hankook 24-hour touring car endurance race in Portugal is split into three divisions. Each one of those has a pole sitter. Qualifying for the race took place on Friday, the day before the competition. In Cup 1 class, the fastest qualifier was the 131 BMW of Hoffa Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport. Qualification was working well for us. Uh, I started with our used tires from the free practice and after two laps we changed on the new ones. Um, but uh, we struggled with getting them into the working window with only one lap to get them warm. So I cannot get a better time then. Uh, we finished on P1, only uh, zero, um, 0.5 seconds in front of the second car. The gap is not as big as we thought. To say that the SOC cars are also very fast today. So uh, I hope we can get the gap in the first stint and then do as usual. Michael also used the qualifying session to practice. We have five drivers on the car. 
and uh, in the free practice our four ones are driving their uh, laps and we said okay you're driving as only driver in the qualification so you can do some practice laps in the beginning with the old tires and then we get the new ones on and set the time. The best time in the SP3 class was set by Nicolas Perro. My qualification is a good good result because we are uh, the first in the class of uh, SP3 and uh, on the three, three position for the TCU. The 238 Lamara team in third overall, but first overall, and therefore leading the TCR class, the number 155 of Kawasaki Racing. Danish and Finnish drivers in a team run by the Dutch of Baz Kooten Racing. Qualification was good for us. Uh, we managed to pull the pole. Uh, we did two quick stints, so that yeah, was good. Pole position has given some confidence towards the race outcome. How did they manage to out-qualify their competitors? Well, we managed to do a better lap, so that's why. But yeah, it's uh, not only one lap, it's uh, four different drivers for 24 hours, so it's uh, a lot more than the quality. What does the team expect from the race? Ah, if we knew, you know, we, it would be a lot easier. No, we just need to focus on our own things and race will come to us, I think. The team Ultram Peugeot's are not as powerful as some of their competitors. The team still has high hopes. We have 1.6 litre car in the category or where everybody have a 2 litre, so we are a bit lighter. This is the BOP, balance of uh, performance. Uh, so we are slower on the qualification, but normally we're supposed to be consistent in race. So less tire wear and um, race stints more or less the same than the bigger TCR like Seat or Audi. So expectation for us, it's clearly a podium. Others will take this race as it comes to them. Uh, mm, we, we, are, we are going to, to progress in the 24, in the, in the race, because we don't know this, uh, this track. So, so we, we are going to progress. The warm-up is about to start. Yeah, so I'll start the race for, uh, for these guys. Chris will be the second guy and the driver in the car, and then uh, you know we'll we'll see how the race starts unfolding from that point on. Actually, yeah, my other plan is to go get in the car, so I'm gonna go get my helmet on. On the starting grid, more than just the entrance of the 24-hour touring car endurance series, the field is complemented with the 24-hour GT endurance series entrance. Both championships have their own start, and that means two pace cars. The pace car for the GT cars has started the warm-up laps, whilst the TCE pace car sits stationary. We have two different uh, divisions in the same race, and actually there are also two different stars. There is space between them, around 30 till 45 seconds, but it still is one race. As the warm-up laps for the Touring Car Series are underway, the drivers are ready to start their first stint. After two formation laps, the field is ready to start the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao. The lights are out, and right from the word go, the battle is on. The race nearly claims its first victim. I close a little bit the door, and then I uh, see the Lamera trying to push into the gap. I give him some space, I drive steering uh, straight, and then he hits me on the door. So. Ah bah, au départ, j'ai pris un... Je pensais avoir pris un bon départ parce que... Je pensais avoir pris un bon départ parce que au vert, quoi. Et puis, en fait, euh, c'est à la ligne. Donc, euh, donc voilà. So so he, he saw he took a very good start. And um, so he got pushed on the right hand side. And he started going back to the racing lane. And actually, he went back slightly too early. And the other car didn't go back as quickly as him on the racing lane, so it just clipped the front of the car. So we had to stop pretty much after two or three laps. This all happened right in front of Colin White. How can them try and ruin a race when the first 10 seconds they go and clash each other down the straight? How stupid is that? And, and, and they went across the front of me, I just backed off and let them go off and went past. Stupid. The incident knocked anti Birdie back to fifth position, but he's quickly coming back through the field. At turn six, the Kawasaki Racing Cupra already back to second, and before the end of the first lap, the number 155 was back in the lead. 
Not such good news for the number 238 Lamera into the pits for repairs. The lap times for the GT cars are quite a lot quicker than the touring cars and soon both fields are intertwined under the hot Portuguese sun. It was really hard with the temperatures but uh, the other cars were suffering so you've got to look at what your competition is, see what they're suffering and drive accordingly. Teams have been trying to get enough cool air into the car. Yeah, we do have a roof vent which, which has two vents that put air down onto the driver, so it does make it manageable. But in the late afternoon, you get a lot of heat off the uh, track, plus the heat from the car, so it, it all kind of stacks up. The heat has affected the Lamera 238. We find out that with the heat, the power steering is getting very, very hot. So the steering is getting heavier and heavier and heavier, um, which makes it very hard for the drivers. So now it's just like hoping for the weather to cool down a bit and then it's going to be easier. I think we are third in the class at the moment. So we're just like trying to get back in pace, basically. At the driver changeover, quite obvious the heat has affected Jem Littman too. I was being a drama queen. Yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted the TV exposure. No, it was, it was really hot. I drove for an hour and 50 and uh, it was just, it's just hard work, you know. That was, a, that was the best racing I've ever done. My personal effort was, uh, uh, I was really on my game today. So yeah, I'm really enjoying the track. It's technical. I'm good at technical tracks and I've got a good confidence about me after Le Mans. I had a good result there with Rick Breukers. So, um, yeah, it's, racing's about confidence most of the time. If you're confident, your head's up, you're going to do better. If you, if you haven't done well for a few years or a few months or a few races, your head's down, it's, it's difficult to get out of that rut. Yeah, Formula One drivers say the same thing, so, yeah. A spun GT car requires a code 60, and that results in trouble for Chris Lewis in the 151 Zorg Red Sport BMW. Code 60 and an Audi in front of me slowed down, I slowed down, and then one of the crazy colored Porsches whacked into me in the back. Not slowing down for the Code 60. The brakes went out, I spun the car and the brakes went out. And they're not the only one who has damage thanks to contact with other cars. The 115 Audi of Bonk Motorsport driving slowly towards the pit lane, but stalls at the pit entry. I have a crash with a, with a Renault and uh, my gearbox is broken and the car is coming to the pit and stopped there. But that was the story and then we changed, we changed the gearbox. Uh, after a few hours we were going out. That cost well over four hours as the team had to change the whole engine. Yeah, the gearbox drive shaft is broken inside the gearbox. But it's easier when we change complete inclusive engine. Three hours completed, let's take a look at the standings. The 175 from NKPP has a lap lead on the rest of the top three. The 155 Seat from Kawasaki Racing currently second. The 178 CWS Engineering car already has taken three pit stops, but it's still in the top three. This is a great run as the 178 Ginetta is running in SP3. It leads that class with a five lap advantage over the number 71 BMW of Core Oysa Racing. Two laps further back is the WEC Motorsport BMW number 139. The Cup 1 class, the Hoffer Racing number 131 leading by three laps. Zorg Rensport 152 second and their number 151 is third. This is endurance. Endurance is about not being in the pits, being consistent and delivering a clean sheet. So a clean sheet means zero mistakes. Zero mistake for the team, zero mistakes for drivers, zero mistake for mechanics, and zero mistake in the strategy. And second after second, avoiding coming in, in the pit lane, finishing the race first. We're at the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve, also known as the Circuit of Portimao. It's an impressive and underrated track, according to the drivers. Oh, it's fantastic. It's our first time at this circuit, and it's unbelievable circuit. It's, it's up there with Spa and the Nürburgring, I think, for, for challenging and fun. And we're the slowest car out there, so when, when you get a, a gaggle of GT cars coming up around you, it's, it's, it's quite challenging to uh, keep it all in one piece. So, no, it's absolutely fantastic. And well, the circuit is amazing. 
I like it very much. Normally I'm driving the Nürburgring and I would say this is like a small Nürburgring here in Portugal. The track is awesome. Uh, there is a lot of high distance and wide uh, high speed corners. So yeah, but it's also really difficult, really demanding on the brakes. Uh, Portimao, it's a very good uh, track because it's uh, it's difficult, it's technique, and it's uh, too fast. Uh, it's uh, and uh, I don't I don't know in English. Yes, yes, very very spectacular. It's the first time for the, the all, all the, the team, all the drivers in this track in Portimao. First track, uh, we don't know the, this uh, this circuit, but uh, we love it. The early leader Kawasaki Racing is in the penalty box. The 24-hour series powered by Hankook assesses time penalties. The teams need to serve them within two hours. SP3 class leader and third overall on the end of a tow rope. And when the tow rope breaks, it's on the back of a flatbed. Yeah, we've been doing really well today, but uh, a few minor problems. Uh, we had an alternator um, that let us down uh, and it tore the belts off. And then we had an adjuster for the alternator belt that broke as well and then tore the belts off so twice we had the same same fix um, hopefully now the car can go to the end with no problems but the problems didn't stay away for long I saw him flash his light coming up so I went to the left looked at my mirror and I saw a shadow so I hold it left and he had gone around the outside and as I saw him I turned in and we we just touched each other yeah uh, we we both spun I managed to sort of get going again Touring cars are racing together with the GTs here in Portugal and that helps some drivers who use their GT counterparts to set even better times. The Red Camel Jordans number 303 Cupra wasn't quite as competitive in the earlier part of the race. Setting a good pace now though. Oh yeah, it was incredible. So um, the car was perfect, the condition was really good. But we had the, the beginning in our, my colleague had in the first stint some issue. So we had to make some leeway and so we were trying to pushing, I was trying to pushing, you know, to gain something of the gap uh, back and uh, I was really trying my best and uh, it was still hot, you know, um, and the car, it's um, inside. Even it didn't look like anymore, but it was really hot and, you know, it goes mentally, physically. It's a big challenge. Driving the 303 now is the Portuguese driver Nuno Corvo. Not only new to the team, but new to racing on track. Nuno's doing incredible. Look, when we heard on Thursday night he'd never driven before, we were like, huh? What, you never raced? What, you mean on a track? No, oh, I've never been on a track because there was a, you know, we didn't understand what his experience was. Uh, and I don't think he understood what a big environment, you know, 24 hour Creventit series is. But we worked hard with him yesterday. We worked hard today. You know what? He's eight seconds off his first lap of my time at the moment. That is incredible. What a terrific job he's doing. Stefan is enjoying his first endurance race of the year. It was such fun. Absolutely. The car is great. And uh, yeah, a lot of traffic. It was great. Yeah, lots, lots of fun. Yeah, just enjoyed it. Uh, my first race this year, so last year, last year I've done uh, two races, but uh, maybe I have to guess, maybe I have to find some money to get uh, to a second one. <laughs> Let's see where we stand after six hours of racing. Top six are all TCR cars. The NKPP Racing number 175 leads. They have a two lap advantage over the 155 Seat of Kawasaki Racing. And a third Dutch entry, the Red Camel 303, completes the top three. Continuing in the TCR class, Ultrans 908 is in fourth position. Stanko and Tanner number 212 in fifth. And the Altran number 308 in sixth. In the Cup 1 class, it's the Hoffer Racing number 131 that leads. Zorg Rensports number 152 has taken second position and the number 151, after problems, has now got a 20-lap deficit to their sister car. The Hankook 24-hour series is based on fair and equal competition. That's only possible if you have fair and impartial race officials. Race direction are there to ensure everyone adheres to the rules. It's a sizable team 
all controlled from a central office. This is the race director's office where the race director sits as the team lead of all the clerks of the courses for the preventing uh, uh, races. Uh, we have a couple of people more. We are, have two people in race uh, control who deal with uh, the infringements on the track. We have a timekeeping besides us who are dealing with uh, timekeeping, controlling, time uh, stint times, driver times, uh, penalties for, for driving and times, etc. And then we have uh, a couple of uh, clerks of the course who's dealing with uh, really giving the, the penalties to the teams. Marshals, timekeepers and race control pass on information about infringements, but the assessment of penalties is always in the hands of the race directors and they need to have a relationship with everyone in the pit lane. It's depending on the, 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 uh, the, the severeness of the penalty. Uh, if it's really a, 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 a something to do with contact on the track, etc., we call the team managers in and discuss this up front and then we take a decision what time of, type of penalty we, they get it. Not every penalty is accepted immediately by the teams. There's a reasonable uh, number of amount coming up asking why this penalty is given, uh, the, the backgrounds of it, and most of the time they accept it. Sometimes they have a better story than our marshals, then we go into contact again with the marshals, and sometimes we cancel the, uh, the penalties. But most of the time, for 70 to 80 percent, we stick to the penalties. It's getting dark and the teams are getting ready for night racing. But not everyone, core oyster racing driving without lights. Radio communication to driver Jim Briodi is not working and the team tries their best to attract his attention. So does the race organisers. After more than 10 minutes of trying, the driver notices the signals and puts the lights on. Stephen Wells is thoroughly enjoying his outing in the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao. It's awesome. It's a really difficult technical track, really fast, really flowing. Uh, no, with the speed differences with the GT3 cars, you always have to be in your mirrors. As in all endurance races, the aim is to stay out of the pits for as long as possible. If you spend a minute in the pit lane, that's a hard 60 seconds to make up on track. Sometimes, though, it's unavoidable to have to call on your pit crew for repairs. The Lamera of Team Lamera Cup comes in smoking. Yeah, he came here very, very hard with a slight fire next to the gearbox. It was actually a drive shaft. It was a CV joint, uh, so we lost all the grease and it actually just seized up. And with the, with the heat, he actually caught fire. So we turned the fire off in the pit lane and then brought the car back in and changed the drive shaft. Another pit caller is George Haynes in the WEC Motorsport BMW number 139. It's cost us 17 minutes, the core plug popped out of the uh, water pump housing. So I noticed that, came in, sorted that out, but the rest of the simp was great, the car was good, enjoyed driving it. Great circuit to drive on, a bit tricky at night compared to some others I've done. The Red Camel Touring Car passes the Red Horse GT. That's a pass for overall position, proving that a camel can match a horse for speed. The TCR car now ahead of the GT4 in the overall standings. The Bonk Motorsport Audi circulating again on track, but the Audi of Stanko and Tanner Motorsport is back in the pits. Now we have uh, so much problems with the front brakes. Uh, in my stint, in the fourth stint, was uh, a brake issue in the first corner. This was uh, crazy. First corner, it becomes over 200 kilometers and brake and was nothing. This was uh, lucky or they did not crash it. And then, and then I come back, we make a new front, brakes and uh, now we drive. The number 175 NKPP racing by Baz Kooten still holds a strong lead with Harry Hilders behind the wheel, but that all changes. The 175 Cupra stationary on the left-hand side of the track. We had a brake issue. Uh, the first stop was at the left rear. We had a caliper leaking. We don't know where it comes from. We now investigate this and we already also did change the front brake pads and discs and uh, we have to bleed the complete system once again. That's why the second stop was. Second in SP3, the WEC Motorsport BMW. But just after George Haynes has handed over the car, there's a problem. Finishes my two-hour stint, 
came in, handed the car over, and during that period, and then on the outlap, the tension has snapped on the um, drive belt, and that's caused the car to get hot, and he's come, gone out, literally, and then come straight back in again. But it looks like it's a two-hour job to put it right. But we can put it right, so... There's a problem in the fuel station, which causes a code 60. Stanco and Tanner uses that to get their car in. The driver reported slight issues uh, with the brakes, uh, and uh, as we had the code 60, we thought we'd take the opportunity and uh, have them checked. We had to anyway planned to change uh, the, the disc, so uh, we came in to do so. The issue is serious, and the race director has no option but to red flag the race. We have a, a problem with the fuel station. It's a problem with with the leakage. We have a leakage, and so we have to do a, a red flag to, to stop the race. We have to take all the precautions for a safe way to handle the fuel that's spilled. Some cars are waiting in the pit lane, ready to get fuel, whilst the rest of the field are lined up on the main straight. Let's take advantage of this pause to have a look at the standings. The 155 Kawasaki now in the lead and with a five lap advantage. The French Ultram Peugeot 908 has moved into second, just three and a half seconds ahead of the former leader, the 175 of NKPP Racing. In Cup 1, it's Hoffa Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport that leads, ahead of Zorg Rensport in second, Zorg Rensport number 151 currently in third. Cor Oyster Racing, probably the longest established team in the field, is leading in SP3 with their number 71 BMW. Second, the 238 La Mera Cup powered by CTF Performance Team and third, CWS Engineering with the 178. This is Endurance. We've come down a couple of days early, so we've come on a big long boat and done a bit of a holiday for two days, travelling here, and then drove through the night to get here. And then um, my wife and uh, my sister has come along, so they're enjoying the sun. And then um, after the racing, we'll have a celebration, win or lose. And then we go to the beach, and have some fun for a couple of days, then go home. In every pit, there are drivers, mechanics, engineers, catering, managers, and sometimes the team owner. Everyone has their own set of tasks. Some of the drivers not just satisfied being out on track and have become a team owner. I've always dro uh, drove a car for many, many years, for about 40 years. And uh, when we started looking at this series, um, I went to drove with other people and that was good, um, arrive and drive. But I always felt that I want to be part of the repairing the car if it, if it, uh, and the strategy. I like strategy uh, racing. So you can think about what you're going to do, how can you beat your competitors off the track as well as on the track. So I like doing that as well and I like driving, so I do both. But isn't driving and managing a team difficult to combine on a weekend like this? Yeah, for me, when you have a good team, it's no problem. We have a, a good uh, engineer, we have a good mechanic. This goes... Uh, I am paying. This is... <laughs> no, it's okay. it's okay. Yes, yeah, that's what I do. So, um, as long as you've got good staff here, which we have, that can do it when I'm not here, and then they shout to me if they need a fix, and I help them fix. <laughs> But with all the team around you, isn't it better to have someone else to oversee the technical parts so you can concentrate just on the driving? No, I love doing the mechanics as well. I like doing both. Um, I've got Rob here running the team this weekend. I'm helping him uh, do that, but he's doing the majority here. But when it comes to fixing the car, I can see fixes to, that, to the bodywork and the, the base of the car so that I can see him and make things for it. I think it's uh, better... When you go to a pay driver, uh, you say only a pay driver and you drive only, then you have no, no to say. Yes, it's a passion and uh, with the Audi and yeah. Sorry, my English is not so good. Seth Thomas has done this in a different way. He's hired Zorg Rensport to run the car, but he decides who is going to race with him, like Chris Lewis. Yes, it took a little bit of arm twisting to get to uh, to get him to come, but I said, "Hey, let's go race in a foreign country." He goes, "Okay." <laughs> so yeah, so we did it, and uh, 
Um, and that's this whole year. I've got a group of guys that are coming over to race with me, kind of same same situation where, uh, you know, they've raced at several tracks in the U.S., but it's time to, to come over to, to Europe and try try some different tracks and, you know, unique tracks compared to what, what we have back home. 3.45 in the morning and we're ready to restart. The cleanup has finished. The fuel station has been moved and from the moment the red flag came down, none of the cars were touched, even those that were being worked on at the pit lane when the red flag came out. Um, we'll probably will need less than a minute to get the car running again. Then uh, we're going to refuel under a code 60 rule and uh, hit the road again. We'll restart in the way the race paused, with a code 60. We have uh, uh, cars who are in the pit lane already for uh, refueling and they have to stop. So we have to immediately uh, have to go to the refueling area after the code 60, of, uh, during the code 60. So during co the code 60 was for the cars who were on track who could refill and the cars who were in the pit lane who could refill. So the race is back underway as if there hadn't been a red flag. The race continues. so. A red flag in the endurance race doesn't mean you completely stop and go back some places. You continue the race as where you stopped. So if they were in, in one line with the leader in, in front, then we can continue uh, the race uh, again with the Code 60. 25 minutes of Code 60. The fuel station is empty. Everyone's topped up their tanks and we're back to green flag racing. Most teams and drivers have been working up to this event for weeks, if not months. It's not the case for Alexander Prince. He holds a racing license, but he came to the track to support his wife, who's racing in the Hoffer number no. one car. Um, I drove races uh, long, long years ago. Uh, then I started working in motorsport. Um, yeah, and then on uh, Wednesday, uh, Bonk Motorsport asked me if it's possible. I have all my clothes here. Um, they, they need a fourth, fourth driver. And then I said, oh, yeah, I have everything here, ready to go. OK, let's do it. The light is slowly returning to the Portuguese sky. Alexander Prince enjoying his race, but the 115 Audi currently trailing in the standings. We got hit from a GT3 car uh, re very early in, in the race. And um, so we had to change the gearbox that uh, put us really far on the back on the whole field. And now we are just driving and, and see that the performance of the car is really good and uh, having fun and, and enjoying this great event here. This is the golden hour. The sun coming up, but low track temperatures. One of the drivers lucky enough to be out at this time in the morning is Michael Cox. But he found it to be a tough stint. I was in the car from when it went from dark through to the morning, um, and I found the sunshine was very, very bright on a number of corners, so it's quite difficult to see uh, the apexes of the corners, which surprised me quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, it was quite tough out there, but good fun. Michael got caught out in a spin. Yes, I did make a spin. I, I completely missed the apex at turn two and then span at turn three because I was offline. Um, I'm going to blame the sun for that. <laughs> the sun? Really? Uh, no, I just outbroke myself. I was offline uh, and the rear end let go um, and spun me around. So it was, it was a very, very slow spin. Um, no other cars involved, no damage. So, yeah, just turned around and carried on. The 71 of Core Oyster Racing is back on track after being in the pits for 45 minutes. Uh, at 4 o'clock, I, I went out after the, the Parc for me and uh, I had a really good run just before I came in. Um, I had a hit from another car on my uh, right rear wheel and eventually broke the wheel studs. So uh, luckily I could come on, come into the pit lane on three wheels. So. Uh, which cost us the lead? We were 10 laps uh, in the lead, and now we are 10 laps behind, so uh, not too good. Here's the standings at 7 o'clock in the morning. The 155 of Kawasaki Racing still leading, NKPP Racing still trying to recover from that time loss due to the technical difficulties in the night, but now running second, third overall, Team Ultran Peugeot, the number 908 car. Their Ultran sister car is also doing well. Before the red flag, they were stuck in the pit lane without fuel, but now they've pulled out a four-lap lead over the TCR entry of Red Camel Jordans.nl in fifth, sixth in class, the Stanko and Tanner Audi. In SP3, a six-lap lead for the La Mara Cup number 238, the CWS Ginetta number 178 is second, another seven laps further back, the 71 core Oyster BMW that's just come back on the track.
In the 24-hour endurance series, the cars are identified, of course, by their starting number, which is illuminated during the night. But there's another number on the side of the car, the LED light that shows the current overall positions. This really helps to identify the cars for the spectators and the commentators. It's SPAA05 who provide the technology to have this information displayed on the cars. It's of course a challenge to work with so many different teams from so many different countries, so many different cars and engineers who have to install the electronics. But in fact, it's, uh, it's, all the teams have a lot of experience here. Um, the, the major challenge is always is that we use a wireless system, a radio a transmitter, uh, with all the te telemetry and radios in the paddock, it's always a challenge that try to communicate with the car in a proper way on time. This is a real-time system that updates throughout the lap, not just across the start-finish line. We update uh, three times per second to every car, so we real-time update the position of the car. Uh, the update we get from timing and scoring, that because that's the official ranking we get from timing and scoring, is done on start-finish line. And depending on the racetrack, we can also do it on the intermediate lines. There's clear added value in this system, so no surprise that it's being implemented in more and more series worldwide. It's not just illuminating a little LED, it is really trying to make a system that can very quickly um, show spectators what's going on. Uh, of course the TV commentators and uh, everybody in the paddock also uses that information and our experience uh, is most of the time a reason for other series to take on, us on board uh, because we're on track, we know what we're doing and we can develop new things for them uh, really uh, in a few days. Six hours to go in the Hancock, 24 hours of Portimao and the race director is happy with the current situation. Yeah, I, I, I think we have a very good race. Uh, I just make an inspection on the track. It also looks very, very good. So I, I think we have a fine race now. Yeah. Adam Hayes in the CWS Ginetta is in the gravel. Normally this would point to a driver's mistake. But that's not the case this time. Uh, the driver reported uh, he had a wheel wobble on the back and we found the wheel had uh, fatigued and cracked. So we had to come in and we changed the wheel over. The team would have preferred not to have needed to take the car to pit lane. Yeah, it's just a rim. They wouldn't allow us to do it on the, uh, off the track side. They had to be able to lift the car and bring it back here for us to put the wheel on. Bit silly, but there, that's the rules. Time lost, which won't help their chances in the SP3 class. Well, it's still a long way to go yet. So uh, the other car, our competitor is having drive shaft problems and we're having problems. So, you know, it'll be a good race at the end, won't it? Just as the number 238 gets back on track after just four minutes in the pits, a similar problem seems to occur for the 71 BMW of Core Oyster Racing, but this one is more severe. The wheel came off, uh, the wheel stud broke. Yeah, we spent about uh, one half hour to change all the wheel studs, you know, because we lost twice a wheel, so we didn't take a risk, so we take uh, all four wheel corners. Uh, we, we put new wheel studs on to make sure we're not going to lose a wheel again, so it's too dangerous. A constant fixture in the 24-hour series is Team Red Camel Jordans.nl. The father and son, Ivo and Rick Brukes, have competed in nearly every single race since the start of the series in 2006. The Red Camel 303 Cupra is here in Portugal, but not with the Brukes. Rick is racing in Asia, Ivo broke his leg and had to miss the race. This has also changed the pecking order in the team. Well, I quite like it. I, I'm calling all the shots. Rick, you can stay with Lambos. I know it's a, a slightly different atmosphere, uh, maybe a little more relaxed, um, but I'm not going to say anything. It would be great to have both of them here. Uh, I miss Rick. I, he's such a great driver, and I love comparing myself to him, but it's also been nice being the fastest driver in the team and being able to qualify, so that's helped me a lot starting a 24-hour race for the first time. Uh, that's been a terrific experience for me. So uh, I'm really happy, uh, I'm really happy with well, what's going on. In the 115 Audi of Bonk Motorsport is Alexander Prince. Out on the track at the same time in the number one Hoffer AMG is his new wife, Chantal Prince. Yes, we have been on the same, same time on the track. Uh, it was once, um, it was, I think it was uh, this morning. And for me, it was, uh, uh, it was re really exciting for me um, to, to, um, to have this moment together with my new wife uh, on the racetrack, yeah. And she overtook him too. 
She didn't know it, uh, but, but I knew that uh, she is inside the car, so I, I let her a lot of space, yeah, when she overtook me. Just four hours left. Let's take a look at the standings. Team Baz Kooten Racing can be proud of their achievements after 20 hours of racing. They're first and second with their 155 leading and 175 in second. Team Altron Peugeot are third and fourth with their 908 and 308 cars. But they all have to survive the roughly 100 laps that are still to come. That also counts in the SP3 class. The La Mera Cup number 238 is leading CWS Engineering second, WEC Motorsport number 139 currently in third. In Cup 1, it's the 131 Hoffa Racing car still leading, Zorg Rensport 152 second, and the 151 also from Zorg Rensport in third. This is endurance. Uh, never give up. That's, that's endurance. Never give up. Well, it's of course the teamwork, you know, the, with the mechanics and the drivers we have, and then uh, the car, the, the car has to be reliable and has to come to the finish. Uh, and even when you had accidents or problems, you always try to fix it, and it, that's a challenge. Tires are one of the most important ingredients to speed and safety. It's what puts the car in contact with the circuit, not just for cornering and acceleration, but also to slow down when needed. Hankook have provided great tyres for this job, but they're not the only thing that you need to slow down safely and quickly. You have to have trust in your brakes too. The teams wear their choices carefully. Uh, we have quite a lot of options. Uh, brand is one, uh, compound is two and to have a reliable and, and, and good set uh, is, is three. You have so many sets of brake pads, for example, for sprint races, for endurance races, but you always want to compromise between modulation, between friction level in the pad and the disc, and duration of the, of the set. And of course, the best is to have a set which breaks, uh, which, which uh, modulates during the whole race the same, uh, for 24 hours, so you don't have to change it, but it doesn't exist at the moment. The brakes we have at the moment, it's, uh, it lasts between 8 and 12 hours. That's also a test at the moment, uh, but to never take any risk, we change them on time. We have planned a double stop uh, strategy, so a triple stint with the brakes. Braking technology is being constantly improved. If you find a brand that you're happy with, you're likely to stay with them. Well, with the brakes, it's always important which uh, type of uh, brake pads, which brand you use. And we have uh, pads from Japan, which work perfectly uh, all year long. And uh, we use the pads uh, as long as I'm almost racing endurance. So uh, I'm very happy with uh, Project Mu and uh, it's one of the best brands. However, not all categories are allowed to choose any brakes they'd like. We drive with, uh, with AP brakes, disc and uh, um, Parship uh, brake pads. Oh, but this is for TCR car, it's, uh, home it's homologated. You have not so much different brands. Um, yeah, it's not so easy. I think it's a little bit problem, the front brakes in the Audi or in the Volkswagen cars. They really need an update next year, I think. Not many cars have the same problem. Even after you've done a lot of testing, and chosen what you think are the best brakes, there's one more thing you need, look. You can make a planning, but in the 24, everything is different. And now the left rear caliper start leaking. So we did an hour too early, actually, the front brake change. Not a big issue as we have time left for the second and third set. The FIA sanctioned 24 hour touring car endurance series powered by Hankook is in Portugal for the second year running. The points collected here count towards the European Championship as well as for the Championship of the Continents. This is a collection of races in Asia, Europe and in the Americas. Or to be more precise, the races in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, the race in Austin, Texas in the United States and this one in Portimao, Portugal. Presently, the car with the best chance of taking home the race win is the 155 of Kawasaki Racing but championship points are awarded to each class. Currently second in Cup 1, Bonk 152 BMW. 
the circuit is really great. Uh, it's really technical. It's fast. Uh, all the drivers have behaved really well up on the racetrack, so it, it has been a lot of fun. Maybe just a bit too too hot. Temperature is certainly one of the variables you have to take into account during this race, especially if there are no cooling solutions for the driver. No, we haven't got any air conditioning, so just the open windows and trying to take deep breaths and then the zip of water from the drink system in the in the main straight and that has made it a bit challenging. And they're not the only ones without air conditioning on the Algarve track. We've just got fresh air vents into the car, so there's no air coming into the car. And I'm just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. I can feel my heart rate getting higher. It was, uh, yeah, but it's hard, it's hard. However, still enjoyable. It's really good. Um, took us a long time to get the car adjusted to how bumpy the circuit is. The circuit's really, really bumpy in places. Um, but we've got a really good setup. Cole's working really well. Did my fastest times in the night. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It's a real good circuit. Enjoyable to drive. Just need more cars. Problems for the overall leader. Uh, 155 was leading and he came in uh, the thing what the driver mentioned was he had a puncture puncture right front uh, car came in and we saw he, he didn't have a puncture on the tire but then we directly saw when we lifted the car that the shock absorber was, was broken and the cause of this problem can be more more things as you have seen the start of the race with the lamera who pushed us off track in the first 50 or 100 meters can be the cause of this the yellow curb stones it's uh, it's a pity excitement injected into the race and into the team the kawasaki car the 155 is now back uh, onto second place so uh, with uh, three quarters of a lap behind behind the nkpp our own our 175 car but if you calculate and we have all the people calculating 24 hours long and they have calculated that one stop of the second car, the 155, is shorter for the next stop than the other one. And he has some better tires left over. And then we only have to see, to look at the drivers. And the drivers are similar. So it will be a sprint race in the last stint between our two cars. We're inside the last two hours of the race. The maximum time a driver can spend behind the wheel is two hours. So those who are getting in from this moment forward will be going all the way to the chequered flag. I started it, I've got to finish it. <laughs> they, they told me that, that i got to go in the sunny weather. And we were OK, we're, we're eight, eight laps behind, but uh, it looks though we could get a second. Uh, we have to get a win, we would need the other car to break down, and we don't want that to happen, so hopefully for a second. We stay on uh, place five or six in the TCR class, uh, in the TCE, Five or six, it's okay. We have so many problems with the brakes in the night. Normally, we stay more in the front. It's a pleasure. It's nice weather and uh, very nice to drive. The car runs now well and yes. Yeah. Um, just bring the car to the finish line. Um, enjoy the last. Oh, sorry. In the Baz Kuten pit, two drivers are getting ready to battle each other. Uh, well, uh, for sure it will be very exciting. Um, the team calculated it will be very close until the end. He's a little bit faster and I need to manage my tyres a little bit better. So in the end we will see. But it will be very interesting. Yeah, we, we, we got some drama which, which we, we did, definitely didn't want to. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Big fight. But important, we need to finish one and two. Is there now animosity towards each other? No, for sure not. We need to stay friends. It's, uh, it's racing. We, when we are out there, we are fighting, but here we have fun. This is best. This is best adrenaline, you know? Yeah, this gives a big kick, so let's go for it. More drama as the CWS Janetta comes in for an unscheduled pit stop. Hi, yes, yeah, something has happened on the steering. We've got half a lock both ways. And now the drive on the back is causing the back to, to swing round in the corners. So they're just checking now what if something's come loose. And it's not just the 178 in the pits. The 308 team Ultram Peugeot needs attention too. Nothing in, in uh, one and a half year of use of this car. And then uh, 
I don't know, three in last hour. Three drive shafts. Two in one car, one in another car, and uh, one already yesterday. Wrong series, I don't know. New parts, happens. I don't know. We have to investigate. Ultran had been running third and fourth for a long time until this problem arose. Uh, it was a, a clean sheet until uh, one hour ago and now uh, we are uh, practicing our mechanical skills to change our draft shafts. The team are happy to get their car back on track again. As they do, they see major problems for the 303 Red Camel Cupra. We had a little issue. Uh, just tyre pickup, all the tyre at the end of the race, that you get the big clumps of rubber. And of course the exhaust is really hot and it just uh, caught fire. It was just a minor fire, so it's surprising to see that they're not getting the car ready to return to the track. No, I, don't, I think there's a regulation there. I think if there's 15 minutes to go, you can't rejoin or they need to check it for safety. You don't know, maybe a brake line's been burned, it's, it wouldn't be safe. So um, this is a race that wasn't. It took Jim Lippmann a little while to get the message when the team told him he was on fire. Yeah, I know, I'm going really quickly. No, you're really on fire. And then I was looking for a marshal post to stop because they're quite long away. So I stopped right by the marshal post. I don't want the car going up in flames. So we saved the car. That's all that's important. No one's injured. The 155 of Kawasaki Racing is back in the lead and about to take the chequered flag for the race here in Portimao. As it crosses the line, it's right on the tail of the winner in the GT Series. But it's Anti Buddy who is the hero of the 24-hour touring car endurance series. Together with Christian Jepsen, Jan Sorensen and Kari Pekka Larksonen, he's claimed full championship points today and that brings the car to overall fourth position in the championship. We look back on a fantastic but hot race. Uh, it was a very hot race, for sure it was, but it was so much exciting. In the TCE class, the, the first and the second place, it was only seconds for, for hours maybe, so it was so very exciting. It was great. We had a team fight and fair fight, it was good. It was a tough one because you had to save tires, but still uh, be consistent and fast because we had to pull the gap. I, I don't know how much was it in the beginning, but more than 30 seconds. Well, 24-hour race, such a close finish, it's awesome. Uh, of course, Antti is an uh, awesome driver. Had some things with the tyres, but that's all. Talking afterwards. Congrats to Antti, congrats to the team, because they did an awesome job, one and two. So we're happy. Yeah, it's a great team effort. You know, without them, it's uh, not possible. At the flag, just 17 seconds between first and second, and it could easily have been the other way around. Yeah, we had, we had during the night uh, some uh, braking issue. We had to change everything, it cost us 11 minutes. Also, that's car racing and the team did a great job and that's the reason why we're in second place. Third overall, the number 908 Peugeot, perfectly piloted by Thierry Boyer in this last stint. Merci, merci, la course a été dit. The race is uh, very difficult, very old, cold, but uh, the mechanic is uh, good. And the team. And team and the mechano and the kine, very good. As the champagne is sprayed, let's check the results. Baz Kooten Racing, first and second. The 155 of Kawasaki Racing taking the victory by 17 and a half seconds over their teammates in the 175 NKPP racing car, who are now up to second in the series championship ahead of their teammates. Third in this race, the 908 Team Altram Peugeot. The TCR class results reflect the overall top three positions. 155 Kawasaki, NKPP Cupra 175 in second, and the 908 Peugeot in third. A decisive win in the Cup 1 class for Hoffa Racing, powered by Bonk Motorsport. Second and third, the Zorg Rensport 152 and 151 cars. And in the SP3 class, the La Mera Cup, powered by CTF Performance, number 238, takes the top step of the podium. Second, CWS Engineering's Ginetta, number 178. Third, the WEC Motorsport BMW, number 139. The results of this race come towards two series. The Championship of the Continents continues in the USA at Austin, Texas, on the 16th, 17th and 18th of November. For the European Championship runners, well, we'll next gather at the 24 Hours of Barcelona. 
and maybe we'll be crowning some champions there. Join us as a spectator, or even better, as a competitor. For all the information you need, go to 24htceseries.com. Oh, <laughs>